Hello, this is Pastor Sam Velez, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for our service. We hope you enjoy this message today, that it blesses your life and your families. We love you. Luke chapter 10, starting off in the 17th verse, the Bible says this, the 72 returned with joy. Somebody say joy. Saying, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing at all will harm you. However, don't rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Somebody give God praise for his word this morning. I want to talk to you for the next couple of minutes that we have together from this question and from this subject. What does the joy of the Lord do? What does the joy of the Lord do? You know, this topic of joy, it's been on my heart for several months now because a couple of months back, I started to notice that many worship teams and artists were releasing songs on the joy of the Lord. Songs like Joy Song by Motion Worship. Songs like The Joy by The Belonging Co. Songs like Joy by Highlands Worship. Songs like Joy in the Morning by Torin Wells. Or Joy is Coming by Todd Galberth. Or Joy by Chandler Moore. And so many other songs. And one day, a couple of months back, as I was thinking about, man, there's so many songs being written and released about the joy of the Lord. As I was thinking about it, I remember one day I felt the Lord ask me this question. I felt him ask me, Alex, you want to know why so many are being inspired by me to write about joy? And I felt God say this, it's because joy is the thing that my people lack. You see, I believe that one thing that believers lack in their life is not influence, it's not money, it's not this, that, or the other. I believe one of the things that believers lack in their life is joy. Somebody say joy. You see, joy is this thing that when people have it in their life, man, they're able to go to levels that they've never seen. One of my favorite pastors says this about joy. He says, joy is the secret formula to be able to live the victorious life that Jesus has called us to live. Somebody say amen. And so over the next couple of minutes, I want to talk to you about the joy of the Lord. And I want to answer that question. What does the joy of the Lord do? Number one, I need you to understand this. Joy is mentioned over 300 times in the Bible. In any translation that you might have, whether that be New Living Translation or whether that might be NIV or NKJV or CSB or AMPC, whatever translation you have, I have come to find this out. In every translation, the topic of joy is mentioned over 300 times. So in other words, joy, it matters for the life of a believer. Somebody say amen. God cares about the joy that we have. God cares that we walk with joy. God cares that we live with joy. God cares that we go to work with joy. God cares that we live with joy in our marriages. God cares about us having joy. But number two, I want you to know this. Happiness and joy are not the same thing. Many times people confuse the two. They think that being joyful is attested to being happy or the opposite. They believe that feeling happy is attested to having joy. But the reality is this. Those two are very different things. And let me explain to you the difference between happiness and joy. Happiness depends on what happens in your life. 
That, that's what happiness is. Happiness, it totally depends on what happens in your life. Happiness is tied to external circumstances and momentary pleasures. You go up and down according to what happens in your life, and that is more of an outward thing. But joy, somebody say joy. Joy is of the spirit. Somebody say amen. Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23 says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, there it is, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. You see, one of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. And I know this to be true. The moment that anyone accepts Jesus, Jesus puts a new spirit on the inside of that person. And that new spirit comes with joy. Listen, I know this to be true, that like that pastor said, that joy is the secret formula to living victorious. I believe that to be true even today. If you want to be able to live victorious in your everyday life, what you need is not a new car or a bigger house or a new job. What you need is some joy. Somebody say joy. Listen, it's possible to win a million dollars and experience happiness because of it, but still not have joy. And I know that there's somebody in here who says, oh, God, test me like that. Father, if you would test me like that, I will pass the test with flying colors. <laughs> you know, it's, it's possible to marry the person of your dreams and be happy about it, but still not have joy. It's possible to have all the accolades that this world could offer, but still not have joy. Listen, it's possible to get your dream job, get your dream house, live in the city you've always wanted to live in, but still not have joy. You see, somebody once said this, God made us for joy. Friend, you weren't created for anxiety. You were created for joy. Friend, you weren't created for panic attacks. You were created for joy. You weren't created for depression or being broke or having insecurity problems. You were created for joy. God made you in his image so that you could have joy. God made you in his image so that you could live with joy. You weren't created to live depressed. You weren't created to live sick. You weren't created to live in bondage. You were made by by God for joy. Somebody say amen. amen. So I want to give you three quick things about joy today. I want to give you three quick things about joy. Number one is this. The joy of the Lord makes us grateful. Number one, the joy of the Lord, it makes us grateful. You know, so many never value the good things in their life because they don't have joy. Some will sacrifice the good and the great just because to them it doesn't seem like the best. And listen, when one doesn't value the good and the great, they compare it, they take it for granted, they mistreat it, and then they ultimately lose it. You see, I always want you to remember this. Comparison is the biggest joy killer. You see, so many people, they will sacrifice the good things in their life just because it doesn't look like somebody else's thing. So many people will sacrifice the great things in their life just because it doesn't look like their thing. So many people will sacrifice the great things they have in their job just because it doesn't seem or it doesn't look or it doesn't sound like somebody else's job. But I came to tell you, if you want to protect your joy, don't struggle with comparison. Because the moment you compare, that is the very moment that you open up the door for, for the devil to come and rob you of your joy and steal your dream and destroy your vision. I'm telling you today, comparison is the biggest joy killer. 
And I've seen this time and time again. People, they lose their joy. They lose their zeal. They lose their passion. Not because God is a bad God. Not because their spouse is a bad person. But it's because they struggle with comparison. They struggle with looking at what they have and comparing it to what somebody else has. But friend, I have come to understand this. If somebody else has it and you don't, it's because God has something better for you. You see, what you have might not look like what you want, but I can tell you this. What you have is what you need, and if you will enjoy it, and if you will take it for granted, and if you will take advantage of it, man, God would allow you to be able to look at your life and be able to say, God, I praise you. God, I thank you for what I have and what you brought to me. You see, comparison is the biggest joy killer, and when one has had their joy killed, they settle. They don't grow. They lose relationships, and they lose opportunities. But when one has joy, they enjoy their life. They enjoy their family. When one has joy, they enjoy their friends. They enjoy the season of life they're in. They enjoy the current job they have. They enjoy the city they live in. They enjoy what God has them currently doing. Notice how in the word enjoy are two syllables, in and joy. So until you get some joy in you, you'll never enjoy anything. In the word enjoy are two syllables, N, E, N, and joy, J-O-Y. And until you get some joy in you, you will never be able to enjoy anything. Why? Because you see, joy is a focus, not a feeling. Joy happens by choice, not by consequence. Joy is a point of view. Joy is a way of looking at things, You see, many people, they think that joy is this feeling. Oh, when I have a big old smile, I have joy. No, no, no. You can have the biggest smile and be dying on the inside. Joy is a point of view. You look at what's around you and you thank God for it. You look at what's around you and you know that God provided for it. You look at what's around you and you might say, God, I'm not where I want to be, but I praise you because I'm not where I used to be. Thank you for calling me and choosing me and anointing me. You see, joy is a focus. It's not a feeling. Joy happens by choice, not by consequence. You have to choose joy. It's not, oh, once I get a new job, then I'll have joy. No, it's I'm going to have joy regardless of if I get the job or not. It's not once my marriage gets better, then I'll have joy. It's no, I'm going to have joy until my marriage gets better. It's not I'm going to have joy after my kids graduate and after they get married and after they have kids. No, I'm going to have joy through the process when they go to middle school, when when, when they go to college, when they go to high school. I'm going to have joy because God lives on the inside of me and I choose joy. You see, in your life, what are you choosing? Are you choosing fear over joy? Are you choosing worry over joy? Are you choosing doubt over joy? Are you choosing insecurity over joy? Listen, joy is not a feeling, and joy does not happen by consequence. It happens by choice. Joy is a point of view. Joy is a way of looking at things. Watch what James 1 verse 2 says. It says, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. And then Proverbs 17 verse 22 says this, a joyful heart is good medicine. Oh, I love that. Proverbs 17 verse 22 says, A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Some of you here look at your house and you're like, man, man, my house is broken. It's battered. My children are discouraged. Can I tell you, you can turn it all around if you choose joy. Some of you look at your job and you're like, man, everybody at my job is angry and they're bound and they're so defeated. But can I tell you something? You could turn it all around if you choose joy. 
Some of you look at your school, if you're in middle school, high school, or college, and you're like, man, my, all my friends are lost. These people are so confused. Man, it doesn't look like America's going to get better, but I came to tell you something. You could turn it all around if you choose joy. Joy makes you and me grateful. Three things about joy. Number one, the joy of the Lord, it makes us grateful. Number two, the joy of the Lord, it makes us strong. Nehemiah 8 verse 10, it says this, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Not it might be your strength. Not it could be your strength. It is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. In a world that's riddled with anxiety, depression, and thoughts of suicide, joy is the answer. Joy is the key to victory. Joy is the solution to the mental health crisis that they say that we're in. Many attest to feeling weak and stressed and discouraged and hopeless. But the Bible says this in Proverbs 10. 10, verse 28, the hope of the righteous is joy. So yes, thank God for counselors. Thank God for doctors. But what you need is not more anxiety medicine or more days off. What you need is joy. Somebody say amen. Amen. You see, it's joy that gets you out of bed. It's joy that gets you to work. It's joy that gets you to dream. It's joy that gets you to apply. It's joy that gets you to start. It's the joy of the Lord that makes you and I strong. You see, maybe you feel weak because life has been hard on you. I'm telling you today, whatever life has done to you, get some joy on the inside of you and let God restore your strength. You see, that's why David prayed, God, restore the joy of my salvation. Because David understood the moment I lose my joy is the moment I get weaker. The moment I lose my joy is the moment I have to fight battles in my own strength and with my own ability. And friend, I have learned this. Fight in your own strength. Fight in your own ability and you will find out quickly you will go nowhere fast. But when you depend on the power of God, when you depend on the on like the presence of God, when you depend on the spirit of God, God gives you supernatural joy to be able to keep on walking and keep on believing believing and keep on worshiping you see it's the joy of the Lord that makes you and I strong many people they feel so weak they feel like man I can't be able to get up and try again because maybe you've experienced rejection maybe you applied for a job and you got rejected Maybe you were trying to talk to this customer, trying to make this sale, and you got rejected. And I've learned this. Rejection that is not given to God quickly will zap you of all your strength. If you allow rejection to take residency in your heart and in your spirit, rejection will destroy your passion. Because instead of looking forward, you'll just keep thinking about the no and the no and the no. But listen, God says, if you will try again with some joy, you tried the first time in your own strength and with your own ability. But if you try again in joy, I will open up the doors. I will open up the heavens and I will will provide. You see, the joy of the Lord, it makes us strong. Maybe you've lost strength. Maybe you've lost hope. Maybe you've lost passion. You tell yourself, man, I wish it was how it used to be. You're so fixated on the old days that you haven't been able to take advantage of these days. But God says, my joy makes you strong. Listen, when people have the joy of the Lord on the inside of them, it doesn't matter what hell throws their way. They're able to stand flat-footed with their shoulders back and their eyes on Jesus. And they know that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Listen, the joy of the Lord, it makes us strong. Three things about the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord makes us grateful, number one. Number two, the joy of the Lord makes us strong. And number three, 
the joy of the Lord. It gets us through tough times. Psalms 30, verse 5, it says this, For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy, somebody say joy. But joy comes in the morning. Listen, we all have times of weeping. We all have times where we wonder why is life so hard. We all have times where we feel upset, discouraged, overwhelmed, or frustrated. But friend, I've learned this. If Jesus lives in your heart, you may weep for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You see, G.K. Chesterton once said this, joy which was the small publicity of the pagan, is the giant secret of the Christian. You see, it's joy that gets you through the darkest valleys. It's joy that gets you through the divorce. It's joy that gets you through the panic attack. It's joy that gets you through getting laid off. It's joy that reminds you that the trouble you face never comes to stay. It always comes to pass. Joy reminds you trouble is only temporary. Joy reminds you trials are only temporary. And joy reminds you tribulations are only temporary. You see, many people, they get stuck in suffering. I, I've, I've come to realize that the 21st century Christian is more obsessed with suffering than, than the blessing of God. The 21st century Christian is obsessed with suffering. Oh, you know, look at what I'm going through. Oh, my life is so hard. And the craziest thing is that these are the same Christians who come to church every Sunday. I don't know what they hear at church because my Bible tells me every time that Paul talked about suffering, he added this, though you suffer for a little while. When you suffer for a little while. You see, my Bible tells me that suffering is not forever. Suffering is only temporary. Trials are only temporary. And many people, they get stuck in suffering. Why? Because the devil has destroyed their joy. They, can I tell you, oh my God, I felt this. You want to know why people get stuck in suffering? Because they feel more in the suffering than they do when they have joy. People feel more while they suffer. Have you ever heard crazy people talk and they talk about hard things in life and they say crazy things like this? But just remember, at least when you pass through that, you felt so it shows that you're still alive. That is the worst thing to ever hear. When you're going through a divorce, you don't want to hear, hey, hey, hey. But at least the heartbreak you feel shows that you're still alive. When you get laid off of a job, imagine you come to Pastor Vellis' office and you're like, Pastor, I lost my job. I don't know what I'm going to do. And he says, hey, 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 hey. But at least you not having a job shows that you're still alive. You're going to be like, What? I want a job, Pastor. I got to pay my bills, okay? You see, people, they're obsessed with suffering because they think that they feel more in suffering than they do when they live with the blessing of God. But I came to tell you, the blessing of God has nothing to do with your feelings. The blessing of God has everything to do with your faith. When you believe, God says, I will open up the windows of heaven over your life. Doesn't matter what comes your way. Doesn't matter what the enemy throws at you. If you choose joy, I will give you strength to try again. I will give you strength to worship again. You see, it's crazy. People are obsessed with suffering. But the Bible says this, that when it comes to suffering, suffering is only temporary because there's a greater glory coming. So don't get stuck in your trouble. Don't get stuck in your suffering. Put your eyes back on Jesus and let him pick you up because there's another glory headed your way. There's another miracle headed your way. And if you don't get unstuck, you won't see the glory. You see... People, they don't understand that unless they pass through the suffering, they won't see the glory. So don't get stuck in the suffering. Don't get stuck with the anxiety. Well, you know, I'm just always going to live with this. No, you're not. You don't have to if you choose not to. 
Well, you know, I'm just going to be depressed. I'm going, you know, I heard somebody say this. Well, you know, Alex, I, I just feel like I'm going through a great depression. Excuse me? Are you talking about the time in America or what are you talking about? Uh, you know, this is just, no, 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 no. Listen, you got to be able to remember who you are in Jesus. You're not just some victim. You're a victor. You're not just some random, ordinary person. You're a child of God. The Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. So because the Spirit of God lives on the inside of you, you can walk through any valley. You can walk through any storm. You can walk through any trouble. And you will come out victorious. You see... That's why joy is the giant secret of the Christian. Because when you have joy, you can wake up in a storm and you can choose, I'm going to walk on the water. You see, joy is the giant secret of the Christian because you can wake up in a pit and you can say, oh, but the lions ain't going to get a bite of me. You see, joy is the giant secret of a Christian because you might be facing a giant, but you say, oh, but greater is he who is in me than he who's in the world. I'm coming out on the other side of it. I came in one way, but I'm coming out better better and greater and stronger and more fulfilled. You see, I've learned this. If you will go into a thing with joy, you will come out joyful. If you will go into a thing with joy, you won't come out bruised, battered, and defeated. You will come out on top, and you will come out with a greater glory on your life. I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and I don't think about the fact that, that they thought about what they were going into. I think about the fact that when they saw those fires and when they saw those flames, they said, who cares of how we're going in? All that matters is that we're coming out. You see, that's joy. I think about Daniel looking at that lion's den, and he didn't think about going in. He thought about coming out. You see, what takes more occupancy in your mind, how you went in or that you're coming out? What is your mind fixated on, how you came in or the fact that you're coming out? And I came to tell you on this Sunday morning, it doesn't matter what you're passing through, get ready, you're coming out. It doesn't matter what giant's in your way, get ready, you're coming out. It doesn't matter what storm you've been in, get ready, you're coming out. Somebody give God praise today. If they believe, they're coming out. Let's see. It's joy that reminds you that the enemies you see today, you'll never see again after today. It's joy that reminds you that you're not staying down, you're coming up. It doesn't matter how dark the night might get. It's joy that gets you through the breakup, through the breakdown, through the panic attack, through the fear, and through the storm. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses numbers 17 and 18. Friend, it doesn't matter how dark the night might get for you. You might feel like, man, I am passing through some of the hardest times of my life. A couple of months ago, I had somebody in this sanctuary come and ask me this simple question, Alex, why is life so hard? And maybe you're here this morning and you've thought about that same question too. Why is life so hard? Friend, can I be honest with you? I don't know, but I do know this. However hard life might get, that is a direct reflection of the anointing of God over your life. I don't know if you heard me or not. However hard life might get, it is a direct reflection of how anointed and how chosen you are. Because the enemy only cares about people who can destroy his kingdom. The, uh, the enemy only cares about people who are valuable to God. The enemy only cares about people who know that, man, they stand on a rock that cannot be moved. The wind may come. The waves may come. The thunder may thunder. But God is with you. Yeah. See, it's joy. It's joy that gets you through the breakup. It's joy that gets you through being laid off. It's joy that gets you through the breakdown. It's joy that gets you through the panic attack and through the fear and through the storm. 
Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18 says this. It says, though the fig tree does not bud and there is no fruit on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no fruit, though the flocks disappear from the pen and there are no herds in the stalls, Yet I will celebrate in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Yeah, somebody give God that praise. You know, that passage right there in Habakkuk 3, 17 and 18, it reminds me of a very famous thing that Job said. Job passed through so many things in in the span of a couple of months. Some of the greatest trials that the earth has ever seen, some of the greatest tribulations that the earth has ever seen, Job passed through them. And at the end of the suffering, Job said, yet I know my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives I know that he lives. I know that he's with me. I know that he's for me. I know that he's never abandoned me, and I know that he'll never leave me. Can I ask you a question today, friend? Do you believe in the God who is alive and is not dead? I read to you a passage found in Luke. Luke chapter 10, verse number 20. I want to read to you that last verse one last time, and then we'll pray. And we'll worship and then we'll pray the prayer of blessing over people. Luke chapter 10, verse number 20. Jesus says, however, don't rejoice that the Spirit submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You see, joy, it comes by way of you saying yes to Jesus. When you receive Jesus, you receive joy. When you accept Jesus, you accept joy. When you get Jesus on the inside of you, guess what? He brings everything that he has to offer with him. It's not like Jesus does uh, like a a trial plan. Jesus is not like Netflix. Okay, I'm going to give you 14 days for free, and then I'm only going to give you some of the benefits, and then if you pay, I'll give you all of them. No, no, no. Jesus is, you you don't get a trial with Jesus. The way that it works with Jesus is this. You believe in in your heart. You confess with your mouth. You accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He comes. He heals you. He helps you. He transforms you. He redeems you. He restores you. He anoints you. And then he begins to use you. You see, when you get Jesus, you get everything that Jesus offers And one of those things is joy. You see, that's why Jesus said, don't rejoice about the power that I give you, about the authority that that I've given you. You want to know why Jesus said don't rejoice about that? He said, because all of that is dependent on you. Rejoice in the thing that I did. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You see, it's not about what you could do in your own strength. It's not about what you could do in your own ability. It's about what you can do because of what Jesus already did for you and me. It's because of how far you and me can go, because of how far Jesus went for you and me. Don't ever forget it. Jesus went to a cross. He went to a tomb, but he did not stay there. Early on that Sunday morning, on that third day, he got right back up, and he got the kingdoms of hell, and he got the kingdom of heaven, and he was able to declare that anyone who comes to him will be saved. Thank you so much for joining our service and for listening to us. We are located at 4519 East Del Mar Boulevard in Laredo, Texas. And we hope that you continue to be a part of our ICM family.